I arcade was, Fort made it clear he wanted to leave, as he thought we had more important things to do. Come and see. Fort worried I was being sucked in by it all. I am not, I replied, I'm ruler of the world. Fort sighed. That's exactly what I mean. I've barely seen you in weeks, we were going to take Barry and Alice to the park, but all you do is play video games. You don't even care that there's a rocket coming from the moon. I've been busy, I explained, and the advisors said they'd take care of the moon, we beat the humans before. We're in a good position to enter into peace talks, Fort turned to leave the room. Buddy, you're as delusional as they are. Is this really everything you've ever wanted? Me when you're ready to leave. I felt awful about how I had treated Fort, so I arranged a day out for us as soon as I could. I had completely forgotten that it was Heather's camera. Suddenly I was totally and completely overcome with the urge to go home. I thought I was happy here, but I realized I wasn't, plus Fort was right, I was being delusional. The moon rocket must have landed by now and there really was no chance of peace. We had to do something. I told the advisors about my plan to go home and head off the man in black, but they seemed more concerned with taxing their own people and tried to fob me off with more days out and video games. So, we smiled and left the advisors to it, waited until dark, and on Fort's advice, just sort of, ran off. It wasn't difficult to sneak out, there was no one around thanks to the robot city curfew laws, but to be honest, as I was their king, I don't think anyone would have stopped us anyway. I think my astro navigation had failed us, as neither I nor Fort remembered coming this way. Somehow we found ourselves in the massive forest, and Fort decided it was time to rest. It wasn't long before we were inside a huge sawmill. Fort seemed quite sad about the trees being cut down. Our journey took us through a huge theme park, it was just like the one in Alice's town but much bigger.
both fought and I was struck by how similar the inside of a sawmill and the inside of the roller coaster were. Eventually we wound up inside the ski resort, but we could see a huge boat in the valley below. Fort suggested we travel under the cover of night, as we were getting nearer the humans, and, home. Cruise liner carried us through the night to warmer waters. Fort was surprised how easily we got the boat, but it was all just thanks to my captain's software. The bay that we docked the boat in looked pleasantly familiar. The gleaming white cliffs made me feel like a soldier returning home from war. It was then I realized we were literally just outside Alice's house. We were about to continue, when Fort noticed something on my shoes. And with that, they worked again, allowing me once more to defy gravity. I kind of wished we had seen this switch months ago, but Fort just seemed to find it hilarious as we continued on our way home. Now then, said the dirty old man, I like this, if that's the police, this is my, I like the, that's the cheapest, if that's the can't say, that's a bit, I've already, cheapest chip, haven't seen, I've already got, I like these, can't say, that's go, if that's the, that's go, the police aren't good, I'll just, I won't, this is my, haven't seen, my wife, if that's the cheapest chip, this is nice, that's a bit, I've already, I like these, that's a bit, this is nice, everything else, go on then. Mainton was the next stop, 
I could get back to the mainland and Mr. Silton's from here. Mainland, this is Mainland. Mind the doors. The train is now departing. This is Big City. Mind the doors. The train is now departing. This is Sitcom. Mind the doors. The train is now departing. This is Factoridon. Mind the doors. The train is now departing. Mainton was the next stop. I could get back to the mainland and Mr. Silton's from here. This is Mainden. and made my way back out to the mainland. boat was gone, so I decided to see if there was anyone in Mr. Silton's house.
I suggested Fort find somewhere to hide, I thought the others may not have seen him as being as friendly as I did. I then made my way into the familiar damp hallway. Everyone was so pleased to see me. I explained how I had survived being dismantled and escaped from the moon. I told them about the robots and the game tournament, and everyone seemed to find it funny that I was crowned ruler of the universe. It was then that I felt a gentle tapping on my leg. I looked down and saw a small girl smiling at me. This is our daughter Heather, said Mrs. Silton. We named her after... Mr. Silton burst into the room looking very angry, at first I thought he was joking, but it soon became clear that he wasn't. I can't believe you came back here, it's all your fault. If it weren't for you, Preston would still be alive. Barry, it's not his fault. But Mr. Silton suddenly looked very sad as he said, this robot got your daughter killed. It might have been because he was 10 feet tall, or because he literally weighed a ton. But everybody was so scared it fought. Still, they all agreed it was fine for him to stay. We chatted long into the night until one by one, everyone went to bed. You can't sleep, asked Mrs. Silton, me as well. Number two on the way, she smiled. At least I'm not barefoot. She then laughed, like it was a joke. But despite having traveled the world, I had no idea what she meant. I suppose everyone else will be up in a bit, I'll get breakfast started. In the morning everyone continued chatting. The subject soon got back round to the military takeover and the man in black. We need to do something, said the old lady. They've destroyed the peace talks with the robots. Fighting could break out again in no time. I don't mean to sound overdramatic, but that would literally be the end of the world, explained Sim. Alice laughed, but the army, there's no way we can fight them. We've lost our band of thieves, and... In the words of that French professor, God rest his soul, we're just some old ladies. The old lady stood up, we just need to take back control of the satellite, we can broadcast a signal to the robots, those robot advisors, they might listen if they actually saw this new moon army. And those giant robots, they call them killbots, said Mrs. Silton as she showed me several photos. It seems the house was surrounded by hundreds of troops and a few robots so tall they dwarfed the building itself. So, I suggested we made our way there so fort and I could assess the situation. Mr. Logan had got the boat out of hiding, I now just had to sail it from the dock back to the estate.
took the fisherman's boat to the old lands estate. I knew you would come back here, came a horribly familiar voice. I should have made sure you were dead when I had the chance. It was the man in black. I have personally modified your nice virus, and now, with one flick of a switch, I'll finish the job. It's pointless now, said Alice, we might as well give up. I don't know, maybe we can arrange a truce, I mean if we agree. But Sim couldn't even finish his sentence. Mrs. Silton just sighed, I think she was lost for words. We really need Barry and Logan, if we're going to recapture the house, said the old lady. Mrs. Silton explained she had phoned him earlier. Apparently he sounded fine, at least until she mentioned coming home, then he started screaming. I couldn't understand him at all. He wants nothing to do with saving the world. His words not mine, sorry. The old lady sighed, I was worried he might say that, I take it Logan stayed with him. Logan's more of a dog than the dog is, laughed Alice. The old lady was only really worried we would be outgunned. She said I would be the secret weapon as I would be able to sneak back into the house. That's true, said Sim, if we cause enough of a distraction. As long as you can get up to the roof, we'll be able to take control of the satellite. Hopefully the virus hasn't reached all the other robots around the world. Suddenly, all hell broke loose. The old lady, Alice and the others opened fire. This was just the distraction I needed to make my way up to the roof. shocked. However, this time not just by the giant brain, but rather what the man in black had done to him. 
I do not want to, said Mr. Deck, but I will shoot you if I must. Why don't you give up, said the man in black, Anton knew which side was right. Why don't you join us, I know we've had our differences but I see potential in you, you could be my new right hand man. You see, there's a link between you and I. Without me you wouldn't even be here. The two brothers designed and built you. But what nobody ever told you is, they were funded by their third brother. Me. I was speechless. How could he, this completely evil man, have something to do with my creation? Thank you. A minor setback, said the man in black as he disconnected a piece of the satellite hardware. I just need to take this core unit and hitch it up to one of the killbots. In fact, that will make the virus signal even stronger. Mr. Deck, said the man in black, would you be so kind as to watch the robot? Shoot him if he tries anything. Mr. Deck lowered his gun. You little yellow bastard, he said, you'd better run.
Somehow the man in grey had snuck up behind Mrs. Silton. I tried to shout down, but no one could hear me. Oi, shouted a familiar voice. Step away from my wife. The man in grey bragged with every blow. Who he'd hurt. Who he'd tortured. How he'd made the world a better place. As he raised the gun to Mr. Silton's head, he said. You're out of your depth. I'm a professional. I used the kill for the CIA. Mr. Silton just smiled and said. Yeah. And I'm a proper c***. With the rest of the great and good now stuck on the moon, and the man in black taken care of, it was reasonably easy to convince his troops to surrender. Signals came through from all over the planet and soon the people began rebuilding civilization. And again, I was heralded as a hero. Soon the representatives from around the world held their first united meeting and I was invited to give a speech. The old lady gently examined me, while Sim attached a cable from the diagnostic machine. I've got some bad news, said the old lady as she took my hand, the virus is rampant in your system, it's not as bad as it was with Betty Fluffers and Fort, but it's still destroying your circuitry. I'm thinking, said Sim, it must have something to do with consciousness. Yours seems more equipped to fight. We'll still need to do something, said the old lady with a serious look. If we replace all of the infected parts we... Come on mate, said Mr. Silton, you know they can help. But I explained that it was too painful, and hurt so much. Just having my diagnostic panel open was excruciating. So you mean, you can feel things. But, you're not supposed to be able to. The virus hasn't completely taken over, Sim explained. But I don't know how long you've got, maybe months, maybe years. <laughs> when you, well. If it all gets a bit too much, said the old lady, come back here and we'll look after you. You should try to get everything done that you want to before then though, said Sim. You know, maybe complete your quest, get your million things, play some games, I mean just do all the things, bucket list mate. Interrupted Mr. Silton, go paint the town red. Remember, said Alice, should you need us? Yes, should you need us, said Mr. Logan, we'll be right here, said the old lady, waiting for you.